It's the National Football League presented by EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got a good one on tap here between the New Orleans Saints and the Indianapolis Colts. Taking it about the one. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. Minshew going to look to throw it right away. And his first pass is incomplete. And we're going to see this offense try and spread the field a little bit and utilize the outside third of the field, especially against man coverage. But that time, the defense was up to the task, forcing the incompletion. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. From the gun, Minshew to throw. That's complete to Pierce. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. And I think this is a route we'll see more of as this game goes on because with his speed, they want to get him the ball in space on drag routes just like this. They want him to get the ball and run after the catch. Good job there, though, holding him for a short game. An early test. Two plays in. This is third and two. They'll try and run for the first with Taylor. Nine yards on the pick up there, and it keeps the drive alive. It was just third down and short, but he'd been off a little extra. <laughs> I would say way more than he could chew, but he chewed up all that yardage in a big way. And that, to me, that was a combination of offensive line, stacked defense, and they handled it. Okay, they got the leverage, they got the blocking angles, and opened up a nice crease. And once you get past that first wave, there's room to roam. Yeah, that's just the third play from scrimmage. They wanted to avoid that three and out. They did. And they're going to get this up to midfield. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender. And that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. First and ten, Taylor now. And he'll get this into enemy territory, but not by much as he's down to the 48. Zach Bond there on the tackle. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. On second and nine, Minshew out of his hands quickly to Pittman. And he's corralled at the 40, but not before picking up eight. And he's already got two catches on the opening drive. <laughs> they know he's going to be a handful. And sometimes you game plan for that offensively. You want to make sure that guy touches the ball. And sometimes it just happens naturally. And then you change your game plan. When he has the hot hand, you keep going back to him because he's running routes with confidence as the game goes on. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. You absolutely have to have this early on, right? Third and short, they elect to throw for it. And that's normal NFL football. They're going to throw on third and short, but you've got to hit it, don't you? Yeah, in the first quarter, like you said, to set the tone, can't connect there. Giving to the big tight end on fourth. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they manage to convert. And that'll keep the drive alive. They only got a couple, but a couple's all that they needed as they convert on fourth. So this drive going to continue following the conversion on fourth. Here's first and ten. They'll go play action here with Minshew. He'll dump this off to Taylor complete. Not able to go anywhere that time. Second down, and they're getting him involved early. You feel like they saw something on tape, or they just have a sense with him because he's had a good week of practice or something in that area, that they want him involved, just as you said. They want him to touch it either in the running game or the passing game, but they must like the matchups they're getting. Minshew's throw into the hands of Pittman here. He's going to go out of bounds, but he takes this one down just shy of the 20. 
Third catch for him on this drive alone, and it'll give him a first down. Well, that's not just his first, not his second, already his third completion here on the opening drive. And I, I think it's safe to say that getting him the ball in this game, one of their top priorities. And a top priority for the defense has got to be finding ways to cover him. And I don't think you can have one basic coverage to get it done. You have to throw a number of coverages at him, make him think as he's running downfield, and hope you can create a little bit of havoc. And the pocket's been protected pretty good here so far on the opening drive. We always talk about confidence in runners and catchers and quarterbacks. How about the protection detail? They're not allowing anyone near the guy throwing the football. Throwing again on second down. Minshew. And he's got his man in stride. Complete. And the Colts are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. Well, no question, this is exactly how they wanted to start this football game. And nice pass there. Now they're set up beautifully, Charles, to finish this off with a touchdown. Yeah, but they've still got to finish it off, partner. And that means they've got to execute at this stage of the field. So we've seen many teams march it right to the goal line and not cash in. They've got something dialed up here that puts it in the end zone. That false start, costly. Moves him back to the nine now, first and goal. Up the middle, here's Taylor. He pushes forward for maybe three down to the six-yard line. Here's where we need to see some tenacity from this defense because they've been pushed right down the field on this opening drive. They've got to find some way to push back, and that's a good first step. The six-yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. Again, it'll be Taylor. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. Only a yard there, and that'll bring us to third and goal. Driven it down the field nicely here on the opening drive, but now it's put up or shut up. No doubt about it, because to make that type of a drive and ultimately kick a field goal would feel very disappointing. But I'm just wondering, is the head coach thinking, is this four down territory? Might he go for it? They'll look to throw on third and goal. And this will be swung out wide for Taylor. Nothing doing on that one, and it'll be fourth down. That goes in the category of a play that the defense is going to cherish and excites them. A completion, yes, you give up the pass, but no gain. I mean, that's exactly what you want on defense. And sets up the fourth down. And Gay knocks this one through. And the Colts hit the scoreboard first. It's 3-0. Well, after marching down the field, only getting three there, kind of feels like a win for the defense. And it does. They'll go to the sideline feeling a lot better that they didn't give up a touchdown after the march against them. But if I were the offense, I wouldn't hang my head over that one. That's a good drive, and three points were put on the board. After the made field goal, Gay back out there to kick it off. Fields it right around the goal line. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. The New Orleans offense set to take over. They start the drive on the ground. Kamara, and he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Nice chunk of yards on first down. It really opens up your options for what you want to do on second. You go right back to him and hope he explodes or sucker the defense in before throwing over the top. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. To throw his car. The Colts are going to get him. Down he goes. Credit the sack to the Oregon Duck to Forrest Buckner. 
And every game we talk about what are going to be the keys as we go into it. Maybe that's a key for their defense today. Pressure the quarterback and make sure you play a good zone defense behind them and they get their first sack of the contest. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. He's going to wind up and air it out. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. I usually hesitate when I say a guy's got world-class speed, but this guy might. So let's fire the starter's pistol. Let's go. If you've got him, you've got to try and use him. A lot of anticipation with the ball in the air, but no incomplete. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. Nifty move. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and ten. Second drive coming up here for the Indianapolis Colts. They've got a 3-0 lead and the football as they start first and ten. They'll run with Taylor to begin the drive. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards, back to the 33. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness. He's the whole package, and that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Out of the gun is Minshew. This one finds Pierce on the out route. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A gain there of 21 yards. But that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. Minshew, first and 10. And he's got the hook up here. It's Woods. And they'll work this down inside the 30. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. They had to settle for three last drive, hoping this second go around ends in six. In good position, first and ten. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. And not a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game that has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try to pick up another first down. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Here's Minshew. Flushed out right. Over the middle, into the hands of Woods. And they'll get him down inside the red zone at the 14. It's also a gain of 14. First down. Sometimes it's designed, and sometimes you just have to know when to leave the pocket and move and make something happen. And on that play, he was able to get on the run and was still accurate throwing the football. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Running straight ahead, Taylor. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. Nathan Shepard in there to make the tackle. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. The last run got a couple here, second and eight. Again, it's Taylor. And he'll be dropped at about the 11 after only a yard. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Now Minshew. To the end zone but it's incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. Matt Gay now gets ready for the field goal try. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. Gay's kick is good, and that will make it 6 to nothing. 
Minnesota scores on their first two possessions, but 6-0, so field goal is probably not what they were hoping for. Yeah, you're exactly right about that. Not what they were hoping for, but they should be happy that they have points on the board. It almost feels like that old slow and steady wins the race, doesn't it? In this case, though, they want to be slow and steady now, but get explosive later and put the points up on the board. So a couple of field goals now, 6-0 our score as the kicks away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. New Orleans Saints, they get ready to set up shop for their second drive. And these guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. Eight yards to go on second down. From the gun, it's a run for Camara. Call it a gain of five that time, and they'll be left with a third and about four. I think we can safely say that those types of plays are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. From the gun, it's Carr. Open man is Michael Thomas. And he is going to have a Saints first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. 6-0 our score after one. The Saints with the football here to begin quarter number two as they've got it with a first and ten. Try on the left side with Kamara. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Not a lot of running room there, not a place to make a cut and kind of exit out because they had everything bottled up. Looked to me like the linemen were taking on their blocks really well and giving up no creases. On second and seven, Carr. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield, that's a lot of fun, and they missed an opportunity. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Shotgun now for Carr. Complete, it's Johnson. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts 33. His first catch, and it's a pretty big one. They get the conversion on third down. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw. And they hooked up there for a first down. Camara with a run on first down, but he's fortunate just to get back to the line of scrimmage there. No gain. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends, they're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. And he will not get away from the pressure here. Carr taken down. Loss of 10 as multiple defenders get to him. The drive had started well after a punt last time. Now it's slowed down a bit. And let's face it, they don't want to punt the ball back-to-back -back series. They want a sustained drive on this one. The Saints on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This will be third and forever. Under pressure, they got him again. 
Quinny Pay drops him again for the second straight play, and it brings up fourth down. These sacks now, they're starting to pile up, Charles, and that front seven defensively, they've had their way with this offensive line. And I think at this stage, we have to start thinking about different play calls. We've got to start helping this quarterback out because the entire game, he's been under siege. I don't care what the down and distance, they've got to get the ball out of his hands a lot quicker. And he didn't quite have the back spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And their two drives thus far both led to points, albeit both field goals, so the lead just six to nothing. But the ability to move the ball is evident. Well, that's, you know, heartening, as they say. But it's not what they're about. What they're about is putting the ball in the end zone and putting sixes on the board. So if you're the offensive coordinator, you like what you're doing, but you don't love it. You've got to find a way to ring that bell. Then you can have a little self-satisfied grin. Right now, a little more determination is needed. Well, we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. And they're able to get this one across the 35. It'll be a gain of 17 and an Indianapolis first down. A good chunk of those yards came after contact, and that's an area where he's really starting to excel as a running back. It felt like he was doing a drill that running backs have to perform all the time, especially in pads, called a gauntlet drill. Two guys, you know, people, this, these two rows, and you have to go right through the middle of them and make sure you take care of the football and knock people aside. He's performing the drill on that run. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. I don't know whether I want to be a fly on the wall or not when they hear the explanation of how he, one of the bigger targets on the field, the tight end can be that wide open and uncovered downfield. Who blew that assignment? Somebody did. No doubt about it. There's no way you're not going to account for him. Minshew's throw pulled in by Woods. And he's going to be taken down at the 28-yard line. But give them credit for a good read right there because they read the man coverage on the right side and sent the tight end a few steps down the field and then angled him to the left on a crossing route. And he was able to get enough separation on this play to turn it into a nice gain. Off play action, it's Minshew. And this one nearly picked off. Yeah, kind of surprising to see a defender of his caliber let it get away, but get away it does, and it's second down. They had their backs up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple of more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. On second and ten, it's Minshew. They're connecting here with Pittman on the out route. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. He's up over 50 yards receiving now in this first half. It's a first down. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. They're going right back to Pittman. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. Consecutive catches for him. That good for 11. And these two hooked up on a nice game to play before, and I always admire play callers that see a play that works and go right back to it, so they went right back to him. The reward, they're set up with first and goal. Minshew sets to throw. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. You got to be precise with your throws, especially in this situation. You're inside the 10-yard line going into the end zone. But sometimes the emotion, the excitement, sometimes the decisions just aren't made very well because of that. Three red zone trips have yielded just two field goals for them to this point, so they'll be searching for something more on second and goal here. It'll be Minshew again. Toward the pylon, call it. Touchdown, Colts. Jelani Woods, a seven-yard touchdown grab as his guys are able to extend their lead. I wonder if he changed anything on his play sheet 
or they just executed better? Because they had two previous drives that ended in field goals. Before this one, they finally were able to put into the end zone. Well, whatever he did, speaking of the offensive coordinator, might be using that formula going forward. It worked there. Yeah, it worked very well. He and his field general in pretty good sync right now. They're starting to move the right now. After the touchdown, it's Gay to kick this one away. Taken in at the three. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. They find themselves down 13-0 here as they try to get things started offensively. First and 10. Chris Olave, and he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. First down yardage on the first play of the drive. Give him 14. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. On first and 10, here's Carr finding Johnson on the out route. That's complete. They'll give him four yards there, and that'll make it second down. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Second and six. They'll pound it up the middle with Camara. And he'll be stopped at the 46, gain of three. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. Carr going to try and throw on third down. And he'll get this one underneath to Camara. And he'll be tackled on the other side of midfield at the 46-yard line. Short yardage situation. You have to wonder if they thought that they were just going to run it inside. But you have to be cognizant of the back slipping out of the backfield trying to find some open space. And that's exactly what he does to the tune of a first down. Now a first down carry. It's Camara. And some room to work. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. All told, it's an even 30 and a first down. They had a chance to limit his yardage, but he was able to fight off that tackle. So it's not just the responsibility of the guys who missed the tackles along the way. It's all 11 on defense, able to stop this guy, unable to do it on that play. They've got to find a way. How about his ability to break through and gain that yardage? Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? A bit of a jump there, CD. He breaks the line, and that'll be five yards. And you've got to stay more disciplined than that, Brandon. That's just a free gift to the offense. So a first and five now after the five-yard penalty from the neutral zone infraction. Carn out of throw. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. Touchdown, Saints! Chris Olave, an 11-yard touchdown. And the Saints have cut it back within a score. And on that one, able to catch it, also able to have the wherewithal to take it in for the score. And how about the phases of a successful catch and a completion of a play? Look the ball in, secure the catch, and then, of course, the run after the catch that ends up in the end zone. Lutz with the extra point, and it's now 13 to 7.
It's showtime, baby. Let's do this. Let's go to the side. We got to go. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. And a couple yards deep, he'll go to a knee. He won't return it. And they'll take it out to the 25. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. A long drive last time out for this offense, Charles. If you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And, partner, as a former defensive back, I'm having almost a physical reaction watching what's happening right now. But let's give credit where it's due because they've done an excellent job moving the ball through the air. Secondary getting picked apart pass by pass. Obviously, they need to make some adjustments there on the back end. Yeah, because offensively, we know that they're not going to be shy about throwing that football. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. Looking to throw it. Minshew. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. Well, you most certainly don't want to go three and out here and give the football right back because your friend, old momentum, He's wondering if he should change sidelines about right now. And if you don't convert here, guess what? He's going to make the trek to the opposite side, and all of a sudden, you've got a battle on your hands. They'll set up a throw. Open man is Taylor. He's got it. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. That's good for an Indianapolis first down on a gain of 10. But they certainly made a point of getting him involved in the passing game here in the first half. They must have seen something in the scouting that said, hey, we can capitalize on him getting the ball possibly in the open field. And I think in the second half, that may loosen up the defense a little bit to get the running game going back inside. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. The last run got six, now second and four. They go to the ground again with Taylor. And down he goes at the 49, a three-yard pickup. That's some good tackling there to keep him short of that yellow line. Yeah, defensively, all I'm thinking is that on that play, get me to third down. Get me into a position where I can make one more play and get my defense off the field. The Colts on third down, two for five to this point. They're up against a third and one situation. Now a give to Taylor, and they'll stop him right on the midfield stripe. He needed two, he got one, and that's going to leave him with fourth down at a yard. To punt on fourth down, here's Rigoberto Sanchez. He'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. And now this offense comes back out onto the field. And as the offense begins another drive here, uh, pretty simple, Charles. They want to carbon copy what happened the last time out when they ended their drive in the end zone. You're right about that, partner. It sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? Just score again, but we know it's not that simple because we don't just make adjustments at halftime if you're a good football team. You spend that time on the sideline, you study what's on the notes and the tablets, and you make those adjustments to prevent a repeat of the last drive. Series to series, the best teams, that's how they get it done. And we'll find out here soon enough whether those adjustments are enough defensively. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. They'll set up to throw. Downfield, and he's got Olave. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. An excellent gain, 35 yards. When teams practice their plays during the week, they're hoping that it's going to pay off on game day. So it sure has to feel good for them when they hit them during a game and they hit that one there for big yardage. 
Throwing on first down is Carr. They'll get this out to Kamara. And they're going to move it down to inside the 25. Well, I like the play design there. They occupied the defense downfield. Everyone trying to account for someone. But unfortunately, they didn't account for the running back slipping out of the backfield. And he was absolutely unnoticed and wound up getting big yards on that play. Car to throw again. Throwing middle, and it's complete. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two, and it brings up second down. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone, or? Better against man, because now you're running away from someone, and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. Second down and eight. Now Carr. Out of the backfield, that's complete to Kamara. Now we'll get a quick timeout called by New Orleans, number two, as the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Into the red zone, it's Carr. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. They're putting together a drive here in the final minutes of the half, but the coverage has been tight all game long, and they certainly want to keep them off the scoreboard here. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. They'll look to throw again. Looking for Thomas. He's got him. Touchdown, New Orleans. From 13 yards out. And the Saints are an extra point away from moving out in front in the final minute of the half. Well, on that connection, it looked like they maybe had some pre-play communication. Maybe one of them noticed an area that was open to the defense to get the pass to. When you put the time in, sometimes you have that great silent communication that you just noticed right there because the best quarterback-receiver combos in the NFL, they know how to make those adjustments at the line of scrimmage when they see something pre-play, and they got it done there. the touchdown Lutz to kick it off taking it about the one and he'll take it a yard or so past the 20 call it the 21 the Colts gonna take over now late in this first half and with him trailing there is still enough time to try to string a few plays together maybe get into field goal range Now Minshew on first and 10. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. The Colts going to take over now late in this first half with his slim deficit closing in on the end of the first half. We'll see if they can move this at least into field goal range and try to get three out of this drive. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Here's Minshew. And that one will fall incomplete. 
Clock here now, just under 30 seconds to go in this first half. He was looking for Michael Pittman that time. And that'll bring up second down. Looked like he had a couple of different options as far as who to throw to on that play. And who am I to say this, but I'm not sure he made the right decision. Well, the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL. That's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have the most success in this league. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. Throwing on first down is Minshew. On the throw, led him too much that time. It's incomplete. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here on this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Again, Minshew looking to throw. They'll set up the screen to Taylor. Now a signal and a timeout call as it comes with nine seconds to go in this first half of play. New Orleans adding some depth to the secondary. They've got six DBs out there now for third. Now Minshew. He finds Pierce. It's complete. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints 33. So we have reached halftime with the visiting Saints out on top. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach, setting out to go for the third quarter. The Saints have the lead and set to receive the kick. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. And the Saints set to go here to begin the third quarter. This offense set to begin the third quarter, and Charles, if they had a checklist of things they wanted to accomplish in the first half, certainly at the top of that list would be having the lead, and they've got that here. That's always the most important box to check, isn't it? But also, they've had some success in their passing game, so probably an empty box establishing the run. They're on pace for fewer than 100 yards in this one, so now they want to make sure that they get that going so they truly have a control in this ball game, and down the stretch, being able to be balanced, either throw it or run it, and try and win this ball game. Kamara gets it again on second down. He'll be dropped at the 25 after a gain of six. Not a ton of room available on that one, but he made use of what space was available and gained decent yardage. And for the Colts, an extra defensive back in there now on third down. A tenth carry for Kamara. Boy, no chance as he was met and dropped behind the line there. Fourth down now after a loss of two. And plays like that are exactly what this defense needs here early in the second half to give it a little spark. I think their halftime adjustment, what they talked about, maybe it's just a little inspirational speech. Who knows? But looks like they're ready to go. Here comes the Saints punter now as he's on to kick it away. Fair catch signaled for and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. Here's the Colts now as they get ready for their first possession on offense of the second half. And their defense did its job by forcing the punt to start things out. And now, Charles, can the offense get in gear? I think, partner, you can sense them saying, OK, the first half was theirs, but now let's get the momentum back on our side. We forced a punt. Now let's go downfield and score. If we do that, we'll be set up well for the second half. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and that will bring up second down. Let's just break this down and make it pretty simple. Key to the drag route, letting the play develop, finding the hole in the defense, and giving your athlete, yes, athlete, a chance to make something happen once he has the ball in his hands. 
to throw again on second down. Minshew, he's going to loft one deep left side here. And that going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. This has certainly been a physical game so far. Limited scoring opportunities for both sides. And there's another chance that goes unfulfilled. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Now a handoff, Taylor with it. And he's gonna have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. 50 yards rushing for him now as he's carried it 13 times. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? Minshew, first and 10. He gets this into the hands of Taylor. He had a great move, but it'll still be stopped shy of midfield. They'll get four there out of the screen, and it's second down. Boy, that one was well-read defensively, and this is all about diagnosis as a safety and being decisive because he saw it setting up in front of him, able to knife through there and make the play. On second down, it's Taylor. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. That's good for an Indianapolis first down on a gain of 10. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower his center of gravity and churn his legs for a really nice pickup. So in Saints territory now, here's first and 10 at the 42-yard line. Now back to throw. Steps away to his left. And he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a halt. He'll get three yards on the scramble there at second down. Brandon, once that one broke down, there were only so many options left for him to take. Fortunately, only first down, so he smartly got the yardage he could get and didn't worry about trying to turn it into a bigger play and end up taking a bigger loss. Here, they hope they can regroup and get something different going here on second down. Minshew's throw going to be caught by McKenzie. And he'll be taken down here just shy of the 30. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Minshew sets to throw. The throw on target to his receiver, McKenzie. He'll be dropped at the 25 after a gain of six. They give to Taylor out of the gun. And he's going to take this one down to about the 23-yard line. And he got half of what he needed there, two yards, and it'll bring up a third and two more. Well, that's all about doing the dirty work right there defensively. Second and short yardage, that's all about plugging those gaps, not giving the running back a crease to run through, and has a nice job to hold him just a couple and force a third down. They'll try and run for the first with Taylor. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. They get six on the pick out there as the drive will continue. And Brandon, you know that expression? He just does what he does. <laughs> it sounds trite, doesn't it? But in this case, it's perfectly apt. This is one of the better runners in the NFL. And all he does is just find avenues, find ways to pick up key first downs and big runs. Minshew's throw caught by Pierce. And he'll get seven yards from the 17 to the 10 before he's taken down. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Jonathan Taylor. A 10-yard touchdown run, and the Colts have retaken a third-quarter lead. 
So a toss play there does the trick as he's into the end zone. And you don't run this unless you're sure you've got a guy who has the speed who can get to the edge because what you're hoping for, for him to win the race to the corner and turn it upfield to the end zone. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Touchdown, here's Gay to kick it away. The return man down to a knee, and this will come out to the 25-yard line. Set to take over once again. Out comes the Saints offense. The last series for him, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. They'll try to get the offense going with Kamara. And some room to run now. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. 86 yards rushing for him now as he's run it 11 times. Good, strong, explosive run that started inside, which means you've got to control those defensive linemen, the defensive tackles, the nose guards. Those guys have to be controlled. How about the offensive line, the job they just did? Yeah, key that A-gap usually on those runs, right? That's where it all starts because everyone wants to kind of control that area. It disrupts things from the defensive side and the offensive side. As we just saw, it opens up possibilities. So the completion good for just three, and it'll be second down. All defenses worry that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal game. From the 39, Carr. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. Got an open man. It's Alave. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts 21. 18 yards, a big pickup there on third down. I love the drive they're working on here because they know they can take the lead with a touchdown. And so far on this drive, so good. They've moved the ball down the field with very little resistance defensively. But they better be prepared for some adjustments to come their way now. They'll run out of the gun with Kamara. Shifts by him. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. 21 yards for Alvin Kamara. And the Saints have taken the lead here in this third quarter. And that run going to put him over 100 yards now for the ball game as well. Yeah, he's really had his way so far, and that's just more of the same right here. All he needs, just a little crease, and off he goes. Carr will look to throw, and he's got it. The try for two is successful, and it pushes the lead up to a field goal. Touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. 
From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. And the Colts now, they're ready to get the football back. And that last drive was very, very balanced, pretty methodical. You think they go that route again? I'm always of the school that until they stop me from doing something, I'm going to continue. And I think that that's exactly what they'll look to do. But the beauty is the balance that they've created sets up opportunities for big plays. Looks like a run, turn into a play action, and throw one deep. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. And not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Marked that down for a win in the defense's column. On second and nine, Minshew. He's got his man. It's Pierce. And he almost gets this to the 30, taken down about a yard shy. That catch puts him over 70 yards receiving now as he's got a first down. Well, they obviously red man covers their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what think. What do you mean by that? Bro, yeah, bro. he made him think he was going to run a different route, probably thought he was going to take it upfield, and then it curls back inside for the completion. They expect this from the visiting team when playing indoors, but not the home team. They're supposed to get all the advantages, right? The home crowd's supposed to help them. They forgot where they were, perhaps. A false start backs him up five, first and 15. Up the middle, here's, oh, he's hit, he lost the football, put it on the carpet. The Saints say they have it and they do. And his guys are gonna get the football at the 28 yard line. Kamara up the middle. And he'll get this one down to about the 27. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. On second and nine, Carr. Alave over the middle. And he's gonna be marked down just outside the 10. Now a first and 10 at the 11. Now a handoff, here's Kamara. A great move, but it only takes him to the seven. He's dropped there. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. But really, that was no surprise there. They've been running it well all game, and I know goals change all the time, but any team will take that type of run each and every time. Second and six with the ball on the seven. Now Carr. Now he's got it. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. So five yards here, five on the play. And it'll leave him with third and a full yard to go. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. Here's Kamara trying to run for it. And he is in for the score. Touchdown, New Orleans. Alvin Kamara, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Saints are able to extend their lead in the final seconds of this third quarter. Lutz will look to add the extra point. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. Let's 
After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. Last time out, they had the fumble. That led to the touchdown. Not a great look on either side of the ball as the defense gave up the points too, Charles. But they've got to take care of the football and do better here on this possession. It's certainly been a tough stretch partner for both of those units, and they kind of put their defensive mates in a really tough spot there by dropping the ball on the ground. But an easy way to make it up to them, get out there now and get some points on this drive. Tackle is made by Cameron Jordan. Three quarters have come and gone. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now in Indianapolis. It's the Colts, so they've got the football, but they've got work to do trailing here as we begin the fourth quarter. Here's a throw out line complete to his running back right side. Gets it up around the 22, but no further. Did flash the fancy footwork, but not much to show for it. And this offense on third down today, five out of nine thus far. This will be third and five. Looking to throw it, Minshew. And a penalty flag comes in as that one winds up incomplete, but the contact is going to move the ball well downfield. Maybe a critical mistake at this juncture is now they've got a first and ten. Back to throw here. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. And partner to me, that one was all about timing. If he's there too early, it's going to be a pass interference call. If he's too late, it's a completed pass. He was Johnny on the spot on that one. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. From the gun, Minshew to throw. He finds his man complete. It's McKenzie. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 40. It'll be Minshew again. And this is going to be incomplete. His back has been a dependable safety valve all game, so he went back to him when his first read was covered. Just unable to connect, so the play results in no game. This one no doubt important for Matt Gay. So this will be spotted on the midfield logo. It's a 58-yard attempt. And I tell you what, he got it from 58. That had lots of leg behind it. And this is back down to a seven-point game. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. There's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get it the least, a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway. After the made field goal, Gay back out there to kick it off. Fields it right around the goal line. The New Orleans offense set to take over. They've been rolling the last couple of drives, each inning in touchdowns. So this game is flipped. They were down. Now they're up with the football. We'll see how they handle it. Can we get a spy on the headset now between the head coach and offensive coordinator? Because <laughs> they've been in attack mode. Had to get back into the game. Now they have the lead. Do you stay on the attack 
Or do you dial it back a little bit to try and protect this lead? Well, my cop-out answer would be somewhere in the middle. I think it's going to be a fine line, is it not? I think you're exactly right, but I do think if they can stay aggressive and keep them on their heels, they'll be best served that way. Buried by multiple defenders on the drive's first play. That huge loss on the sack makes this job much more difficult. It's now second down and 22 yards to go. Now Carr. They'll set up the screen now to Camaro. And he is going to lose yardage here. It'll be a loss of two, maybe three on the play. And they're going to face an uphill battle here on third and long. Time to give a little credit here. That was an excellent read by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Oh, you're crediting your defense. Got to credit them on that one because they tried to fool them, right? Tried to trick them, ran a screen, and they went to it and smothered it for a loss of yardage. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. Critical play in this football game because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that if they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock, really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. To return is McKenzie. That'll be a 41-yard punt, four yards there on the return. And out will come the offense as they take over. The Colts getting another possession here on offense. Last time out, you remember their drive stalled, but thanks to their kicker, booted a long field goal to at least get them three. Now here they'll try to do better and find the end zone. And in our experience, how much fun is it for coaches to know that they've got a kicker who can nail it from long distance? Now the hard part is, as an offensive play caller, you don't want that in your head too much where you're relying on it. And he goes out and gets the job done for them. But I'm quite sure he would be content to just kick extra points from here on out. Yeah, absolutely no question. I think his teammates would be okay with him just kicking the extra points as well. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Back to throw. He finds his man complete. That's McKenzie. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work this to the 45. On third down, here's Taylor. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. 87 yards rushing for him now as he's toted it 21 times. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Consecutive positive runs for him on the last two snaps. He certainly appears to be trying to put the offense on his back and just move them down the field when his number is called. The way he's running it, I keep going back to him. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. They'll set up to throw. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. He was looking to get it to Jonathan Taylor there. And it's third and five. I think he could have scanned downfield forever, but there wasn't anything available. Ends up throwing an incompletion, and I think he'll take that. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. They're going to look to throw. And a throw there going to be incomplete. Well, oh, they'll certainly be on the tablets going over that one for sure. Clearly, they were expecting something else out of the defense and couldn't adjust to make that completion happen. On fourth down, Minshew. And he's brought down. Can't do anything with a football. It's a sack. And a turnover on downs. 
On first down, Carr. Slam pass complete to Alave. A gain of eight there on the play. And they'll be left with second and a couple. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, you often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. Throwing on first down is Carr. Alave holds it in. And he's going to be taken down just shy of the 35. And just a yard to go here on second down. A man who's been busy this afternoon, it's Kamara again. And he gets it down to the 32. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation where they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously, but at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. A really good pickup of 28 yards. And these guys certainly are not hiding what their intention is. They're absolutely showing it. They're definitely not going to sit on this lead here in the fourth quarter. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. Carr. And that'll be off the mark, too far out in front, and it's incomplete. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. A line of scrimmage once again, the five, as they get ready for second and goal. To throw, it's Carr. And he's got it. Touchdown, Saints. Third touchdown pass now for Derek Carr. And the Saints have opened up a two-touchdown lead here in this fourth quarter. But that's certainly an important touchdown there. It makes this a two-score game. But as we've seen, no lead is safe in this one with the way these two offenses have lit up the scoreboard. I would imagine that on their sidelines, they're both yelling at their defenses, hey, you want to get involved here? One big play from you, that could win the game for us. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. And the Colts coming out now. And a drive that stalled out last time. Went for it on fourth, didn't get it. How does that translate here? I would imagine momentum's with the defense definitely with the defense because anytime anyone goes for it on fourth down that's telling you as a defense that they you can't stop us we don't think that you can and he fumbled it it's on the ground and this is picked up by the saints and they have the football and will take over at the 24 yard line and now before the ball changes hands they're going to take a look at this just to make sure that they have it right and the colts getting ready to go and last time they were stopped on fourth down, had a drive stalled out. We'll see how they respond this go around. 
I'm eager to see what their mindset is because moving the ball, feeling good, and then that abrupt stop on fourth down, do they go back to the bench and go, oh, boy, they've got something for us? Or do they go to the bench and say, we blew it ourselves. Let's get back out there and move the ball again. And is it different when you get stopped on fourth versus punt? Is that more motivation for the defense, a little more confidence? I think as a defense, you're so excited with a fourth down stop. Making them punt, that's your goal anyway. But a fourth down stop, that's almost a sign of disrespect that they went for it in the first place. And when you get that, you feel great about yourselves. And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. He lost two, and it brings up fourth. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty. But when it doesn't, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked off by Paulson Adebo. And the Saints will have solid field position here as they take over at their 45-yard line. Meanwhile, Carr's throw caught by Alave. And down he goes at the 45 after a pickup of nine. And we've seen him have success earlier on with the ball in his hands because he is a get it in space and make a play kind of a receiver. But that time, they closed on him quickly and held him to a short game. They'll come up now on second and a yard. Here's Carr. To the sideline, and oh, that's well done. Able to drag the feet, he's going to have the first down. A gain of four that time as the drive continues. When you have someone throwing it that well, that confidently, you don't have to call the game in fear at all, do you? You just go ahead and play. Yep, confidence with a lead to throw it here in the fourth, and boom, he's on the money. Yeah, you don't have to tuck your head in and, and go like turtle at this point. You can just go ahead and play. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far at second down. Well, he's got to be careful with this game where it is, Charles, throwing those out patterns, right? You're exactly right, because this is why we always hear teams say, late in the game, you're trying to close things out. You'll work the middle of the field more than the outside portion, because if you throw one out there that hangs a little bit or you float it, it can be picked off and returned for a touchdown. And boy, what a dramatic turn of events that would be. And he gets it down to the 32. 133 yards rushing for him now as his sensational afternoon continues. So from second and long, now we go to third and very manageable. Yeah, they love that phrase, don't they? Because as an offensive coordinator, you can keep people a little bit off balance in guessing because you don't have to throw it. You can come back with a strong run game if you want to. And if you're in four down territory, that really opens things up for you. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive alive. Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, and we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball, you often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story they'll talk about after this one. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. You can really tell right now both sides have amped up the aggressiveness. That time, the offense winning the aggression battle. And the defense was obviously aiming for the football, maybe a little bit more so than the runner himself. And that's why he was able to break through and get the gain that he did. Second down, Kamara. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. This is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. 
A give to the fullback on the dive. And he appears to be about two feet short on third and three. Leaves him with a fourth and one. They'll go for it. It's Carr. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. So the Colts now down by two touchdowns. At time, a huge factor. Now the fourth down stop, the first of a series of events that will need to break their way, but bottom line, they're still alive. Minshew. His throw is going to be incomplete. A lot of practice time, a lot of thinking goes into two-minute drills, even on the defensive side. So now you want to make sure the guys understand. Continue to be aggressive, but make sure you're smart in doing so. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Here's Minshew. Escaping the pressure right. The throw on target to his receiver, McKenzie. And he'll be out of bounds right at the 40. They call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores. Want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. Now Minshew. Pass complete to Taylor. So he'll be stopped here for no gain, and it'll be second down. Now they couldn't get anything going there out on the right side in the flat of the swing pass. And didn't we have a discussion with their staff about wanting to get the backs more involved in the Big passing emphasis. game? Huge emphasis for this game, but obviously the defense had other plans and really made a nice play. Looking to throw again on second down. Minshew, and this throw incomplete. Now the defender all over him that time, and it's going to lead to third down. One thing you hope to see out of a rookie tight end is a real concentration when the ball's in the air, and I'm not sure that he didn't, but he has to be prepared for people making a play on it when that ball's up for grabs. They had the incomplete pass on second down. Now they need a big play here, third and ten. Again, Minshew looking to throw. And yeah, that will be incomplete. That means it's just one last chance left, and this has to be a first down or a touchdown, or this game's over. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that's caught at the 25. So they will wave off the flag and let the completion stand. Really great job by the receiver fighting through all the contact and still coming down with the football. All that great work and practice being put into the game. Now Minshew on first and ten. He'll get this one to Pittman. And they're going to get this down to about the 17-yard line here. Now the Colts moving quickly here in the hurry-up offense. From the 17, Minshew over the middle. That's caught by Taylor. And able to get him down, but he does reach the 5. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives him a first and goal. He's having a big game through the air, and sometimes those smart decisions just dump it off. That's how you continue to have big games through the air. I agree totally. That's, that's a great analogy, a great way to put it, because he doesn't get too greedy where everything has to be pushed downfield, trying to create big plays that aren't there. You dump it off and take that nice gain, and things add up, and now you have the kind of game he's having.
Now Minshew. And that is incomplete. 16 seconds now on the clock. And now defensively in the two-minute drill, the big key to me, make sure you understand your assignments. And anytime you get a chance to tackle someone in bounds, get them on the ground. A line of scrimmage once again, the five, as they get ready for second and goal. Minshew sets to throw. And this is caught. So it's a late touchdown, but maybe too late. Still a little time left on the clock, however. Coming from where they were, they knew this was going to be tough, but they got the touchdown. Now they need the miracle, the onside kick and a little extra. Yeah, and you have to get the onside kick and not have the ball bounce around a lot and eat up time. You want to be able to grab it, possess it, and get your offense out there for what you just termed a miracle, miracle. last chance. Extra point by Gay is up and good. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. So looking at this situation, you should have time for the onside kick and then at least one play. And this is going to be recovered by the hand team. And that should just about put a capper on this one. They had to go for it with no timeouts remaining, though now this one's as good as over. They gave it an effort. They tried their best, did everything they could to try and get the ball on the onside kick. You're exactly right. They had to try it. It was their only option. And now this game is done. Just take it, kneel, and call it a day. Car down to a knee, and that ought to just about do it. Well, this was a very close ball game at halftime, Charles, but in the second half, that offense kind of kicked things into another gear, and they were able to pull away for the victory. And Brandon, I think they're the type of team that just looked in the mirror and said, hey, ton of pressure on, but we're the type of team that can flat out handle it. They stood up, stood up with confidence, and made it happen for a victory.